Have you ever wondered how to make chocolate covered cherries at home? You know, the kind with the liquid center? Well, I'm gonna show you how and it is super easy and only requires a few ingredients and you can have a batch of beautiful chocolate covered cherries. Welcome to the Salt and Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today we're gonna make chocolate covered cherries. They are my all time favorite candy and remind me of my grandmother. And I love the fact that you can make them at home. They're really easy to do. They do take a little bit of time, but we're gonna take it step by step so it's super easy for you to do at home. The first thing you need to do is get a jar of maraschino cherries. You need about 24 for this recipe, but you could use, you could make 48. You could make as many as you want or as few as you want. That's fine, just by uh, adjusting the ingredients. The first thing though that you have to do before you go to make your chocolate covered cherries is to get the cherries dry. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. You can put them out on you know, a sheet pan lined with some uh, paper towels and let them sit overnight and kind of drain and dry up. That's perfectly fine. But what I'm gonna do is use the dehydrator behind me there to speed that process up so it doesn't take me you know, all night to let them uh, dry. So I'm gonna set the dehydration function on 105 degrees, which is very low, and I'm gonna go somewhere between two and three hours. And that's gonna give us enough time to mix up our um, cherry filling thing, I guess you'd call it, the nougat it probably is, um, that wraps around the cherry and get that to chill for a little while too. And then you can go off and do something else and then come back and finish them up. All right, so I'm gonna put these on the tray. Now, you can use your cherries with the stem on or the stem off. I actually prefer them with the stem off because I like them to be completely covered in the chocolate like you get you know, when you buy a box of them. But I'm gonna do a few here that have the stem on just so when we go to dip them and everything, I can show you some of the tips uh, to make sure that you don't have your filling ooze out when you dip them in chocolate. So I'm just gonna take 24 of these good looking cherries and put them on here. So you wanna pick out cherries that are formed nicely, they don't have a lot of cuts in them and, and are plump. All right, there we go. So I put a few extra on my tray usually, so the recipe will make 24, but I usually try to do somewhere, you know, between 26 and 28 cherries. All right, I'm gonna pop these into the dehydrating oven back there, and then we're gonna to get to mix up the part that wraps around the cherry that then liquefies. All right, so now we're gonna make up the part of the chocolate covered cherry that gets wrapped around the cherry and then after we dip it in chocolate, it sits. And as it sits and ages, the there's a special ingredient that we're gonna use that breaks down everything and turns it to a liquid center. So these chocolate covered cherries, when you bite into them after a couple of weeks, because they need to sit a couple of weeks, um, then they'll be liquefied. So it's just, it's wonderful and it's so easy to do. I have two cups of powdered sugar and I'm gonna use my stand mixer. To mix this up, you could mix it up by hand. You can mix it up with a hand mixer, no problems, but I've got the stand mixer and it's just as easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down, lock it into place. We're gonna add two tablespoons of butter. I'm using salted, but unsalted butter would be fine. One tablespoon of the maraschino cherry juice is gonna go in. And now to boost the flavor, I'm using a cherry bakery emulsion. I really recommend picking this up, but if you can't, don't have time, it's available on Amazon and I will link to it below in the video description, you can use a different type of cherry extract. But I really like the bakery emulsions. I just think that they add such a great flavor and a little bit goes a long way. So we're gonna use a half of a teaspoon in this recipe. And then for the secret ingredient, which is also available on Amazon, and I will link to it below, it's called Invertase, okay? And so this is what allows the centers to liquefy over time. It works perfectly. I've made this recipe several times. The hardest part is waiting for it to happen. But even if you can't wait, 
Trust me, they're still good, but it takes about two weeks for the centers to liquefy. Now, I know some other people soak their cherries in like a brandy or another liquor, and that will over time also break down the sugar, but I just found this to be so easy, and it's very inexpensive on Amazon. So go ahead and pick up a bottle of this. It'll last forever, too. We only use a half of a teaspoon. So you can make a whole bunch of chocolate-covered cherries with this. And then the last ingredient is a half of a tablespoon of light corn syrup. All right, and that's it. So now we just turn the mixer on and let it all mix up. Now start your mixer on low. So that way you don't have a whole poof of the powdered sugar coming out at you. And your butter should be room temperature too. All right, so everything is mixed up now but it's pretty powdery and we need it to come together a little bit more. So if that happens to you, you're just gonna add in a little bit more of the cherry juice. Some of it on the bottom starting to get to the consistency that we want, but still, we need a little more liquid in here, but be very careful when you're adding in the liquid. You don't wanna add too much and I'll show you exactly how it should look when it's perfect. All right, so let me go ahead and pour in some of this cherry juice. I'm gonna add about another half of a tablespoon. And see how that does, little bits at a time. All right, it's starting to do what it should be doing. It's starting to form like uh, bigger pieces, almost like you would see just before you start to form like a dough ball. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, lift up the lid here and give it a feel. So what you wanna do is squeeze it together and it should feel pliable, not too dry, not too cracky and it should be smooth when you push it together. This is pretty good, but I think I'm just gonna put in another half of a tablespoon of the cherry juice. I just want it to be a little bit more pliable because I can see it cracking a few places, and when you go to form it around your cherries, you don't want it to do that. So I'm gonna add in another half of a tablespoon, and this can vary depending on um, several different factors, and in other test batches, it has not required more than one tablespoon of the cherry juice and today it's requiring more so just pay attention to the look and not the exact amounts because maybe i was a little heavy-handed with the powdered sugar this time i mean you know things like that happen so we will just make it work right fix it up now this is what you want to say this is looking perfect now Absolutely perfect. All right, all done. Now we're gonna lift it up and I will show you. So now it is, I'm gonna say like the texture of Play-Doh and that is what you want. It's not too wet, it's not dry, it's pliable and it's gonna work perfect for our chocolate covered cherries. So what I'm gonna do is get this into, I'm gonna wrap it probably in some saran wrap or you can put it in a bowl and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator just to chill it just a little bit while we wait for our cherries to finish. And then we will get to wrapping them, chill them and dip them. All right, so I had the cherries in dehydrating for just 90 minutes. And when I uh, touched them, 
they are no longer wet, so that we're good to go. You can also uh, dry them off a little bit with paper towels, but keep in mind that they're sticky now, and if you put paper towels on them, you might end up with little pieces of paper towel on your cherries, that wouldn't be great. And I took this out of the refrigerator, and it's only been out like five minutes, but it's already starting to soften, so we're good to go there. So now we're gonna do our assembly of our chocolate-covered cherries. So get a pan or a plate or anything like that, something that can fit in your freezer, because we wanna put these in the freezer for a few minutes. Line it with parchment. You don't even need to butter the bottom like I do in some other recipes. Just line it with parchment. And then get a small scoop or equivalent. This is probably about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. In fact, I'll test it out for you and I'll let you know exactly. So I just take a scoop of this mixture, roll it into a ball. I'm gonna do one here right in the center to show you. And then I'll do one without the scoop, so you'll know what size if you don't have a scoop. Set it, you know, line it up like that, but I'm gonna do it right in the center here so you can see it. Then cover it with parchment. Oh, there's a ton of ways you can do this. You can flatten it with your hands. I just found this to be the easiest way. And then take something heavy, which this is my meat tenderizer, so I love using it, but you could use another plate, and then press down. That helps get a nice, thin, circular round that usually is the perfect size for doing this. And now you take it up, take a cherry. I'm gonna do one that has not, does not have the stem in it. Put the cherry in and fold this up, okay? Fold it up so it's covering nicely and then roll it again. You want it as smooth as you can get it because your chocolate, your, when you dip it, you want a smooth covering. So get it nice and smooth like that. Make sure there's no thin areas. So if you see something like this looks a little thin, just sort of move the fondant around a little bit until you get it nicely covered. Roll and then place it on your parchment because then we're gonna get them into the freezer. All right, let me grab just a teaspoon so I can tell you exactly how much makes the perfect filling here. And I'm gonna guess it's a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons, but let's see. Okay, that's about one teaspoon. So I was a little off, probably about two and a half. Two and a quarter to two and a half teaspoons is what you want. And then we'll roll it. Press it out nice and flat. You could even use a rolling pin for this. That would be fine too. So there's a ton of ways you can do it. I just uh, ripped my paper though. <laughs> oh well, life goes on, right? I don't need all that paper anyway. See, don't worry about any little mess ups. They can be fixed. All right, let me wrap one real quick that has a stem in it. So let me pull this up, even though it didn't roll as nicely because I ripped my paper, it's fine. So when you go to roll one with a stem, do the same thing. Take your fondant up and make sure you wrap it. And I'm calling it fondant. I don't know that it's technically fondant, but roll it up so it wraps around your stem. Okay, so the, the most common thing that happens when you're making chocolate covered cherries is that when you have the stem in, is that the filling, as this starts to break down and become liquid, it will leak out of there and cause some issues with your chocolate. So you wanna make sure that you really have it formed around the stem. Now, another thing, I'm gonna show you this right now because it's happening here and I got a little bit of juice here. So you can see that one wasn't totally dry enough Enough, and I'm having trouble getting the fondant to stick. So that's the reason why we need to dry the cherry. So don't skip that step. And I might have to actually take the fondant off of this one because it might not stick, but we'll see. Yep, see, it's just breaking it down too much. So that is why they have to be dry. So basically this one wasn't ready. And that's all right. 
no problem. I'll set it over to the side. I will dry that one off and I'm gonna get rid of this because it's not gonna work for you or for me, I should say. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these done and you can watch as I do it. It's good to go. We're gonna set it here and then pull the edges up and make sure to go around the stem and get that nice and covered. I find them harder to roll with the stem on, which is another reason why I just don't like to do them with the stem, but they look pretty. So try to get it as smooth as you can. It's, it's difficult with the stem. All right, there we go. All right, so I got 20 out of this batch. Usually I get 24, so maybe I just was a little heavy handed with the scoop, no, no big deal. And of course I had to discard one because it was just too wet. So now I've got them all set up and I'm gonna go ahead and pop them into the freezer while I get the Ninja Foodie set up to be the double boiler for the chocolate dip. All right, so let's make our chocolate for dipping the candy in. And what I'm gonna use is the Ninja Foodie because it makes a fantastic double boiler. And I have um, a double boiler, that's what this is called, in the pot and I have two cups of water in there. That's gonna create the steam to melt the chocolate gently. If you don't have a double boiler or something that will fit in the pot like this, use the rack and you can use a bowl and that's fine. And then um, I usually will seal around the edges a little bit with some foil just to keep it from all leaking out. And then you can still use the Ninja Foodi to melt the chocolate. And we're gonna use the sear saute. High is what we want for now. I will decrease that, but right now we wanna get that water boiling. When you're adding water to your pot, it doesn't matter how much or how little you add, uh, but you might have to add more if it uh, dissipates, you know, because it's going to evaporate into steam. But what you do want to make sure is that the bottom of your pot or bowl is not in the water. That is going to create too high of a heat and it's going to uh, over temp your chocolate, which will lead to it seizing up and it will be a crumbly mess and impossible to work with. So make sure that you're a good inch or two above the water line. So the you know, however deep your bowl is that you're using, you just need to adjust your water for that. But for this one, it's two cups of water, high sear saute, start letting it get uh, hot in there and producing some steam. Now, let me talk about the chocolate that I'm using because the best way to make dipping chocolate for candy is to use a real chocolate bar, a good quality chocolate bar, but you would need a lot of them to dip a lot of candy and it can get pretty expensive. Um, and then you temper those candy bars. So you melt the chocolate, then you add some cooler chocolate to it and that tempers it and you get a nice shiny covering on your whatever candy you're dipping in chocolate but I don't wanna to go to all that trouble. So I wanna use chocolate chips, but I am using a higher end chocolate chip. This is a, a dark chocolate from Ghirardelli and I'm using some melting chocolates. The melting chocolates are also from Ghirardelli and I really recommend spending the extra money because it's gonna give you the best flavor. The reason why I use both is because these are obviously meant for dipping chocolate in. However, if you've ever tasted one by itself, they're not very good. And so I really want that nice dark chocolate flavor when I dip my candy. So I'm gonna use uh, some chocolate chips. It just helps to boost the flavor, if you ask me. If you wanna use all melting chocolates, perfectly fine. You can also use semi-sweet, you can use milk chocolate. You know, you don't have to use dark chocolate to dip any of your candies in. You can use what chocolate you like to use. But this is what I'm gonna do, and it's eight ounces of each, which is about a cup and a quarter of each type of chocolate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these in. Then we have to wait for them to start to melt, which doesn't really take that long, and we'll stir them up. Meantime, I'm gonna show you what happens. Like, let's say you just have a bag of uh, dark chocolate or a bag of, um, you know, semi-sweet and you wanna use that for dipping. It will work, okay? It will set up. I dip this candy in all dark Ghirardelli chocolate chips, okay? Now, if you look at it from this side, it's beautiful. But you can see, oh, you can see these streaks on this side. That's what happens, okay? It's not real shiny. It's not horrible, but you get these little streaks, okay, from using just regular chocolate chips. So I do recommend using the combination. It seemed to work much better um, when I was dipping other candy in there. All right, so we just let this go ahead and 
uh, melt up a little bit. I'll stir it a few times and we will leave the candy in the freezer until we're just about ready to dip it because you don't want it to warm back up. All right, so once the chocolate, well, once the water starts to really steam and you can see my overhead camera's all steamed up, you can go ahead and turn your heat down and I usually turn it down to low medium for now and finish melting the chocolate. I've already stirred it once, which you're not gonna be able to see right now because we're all steamed up, but that's okay. Here, I'll take it out and show you. So you can see it's starting to melt, but it's got a little ways to go. We wanna do this gently too. We don't wanna, we don't wanna overheat. We don't wanna melt, um, too fast or anything. We want to do this gently. The other thing I'll say is be very careful when you're stirring this. You don't want to make sure that you are away from the steam, okay? So pull your bowl back so you're not over top of the steam because the steam can really burn you and steam burns are extremely painful. So make sure either wear heat protective gloves or just be very careful by pulling your bowl towards you before you start to stir the chocolate. All right, it's gonna take probably about five minutes or so for that to finish up. The other thing I should mention about the uh, the amount of chocolate and melting chips that I put in is that's going to depend on how uh, big your bowl is in diameter. You want to have a good level of chocolate. So if you have a wider bowl, you're going to need a little bit more chocolate than I used. So try to find something that has a uh, a bowl that is about maybe six inches in diameter. That's going to work the best for you for dipping the candy. All right, so everything's looking really good now. Almost all the chocolate has melted. It's nice consistency. Still have a few little pieces that need to melt, but that's fine. I'm just gonna stir it a little bit here. Now, I like the consistency of this. I think it's perfect. But if yours was a little thicker and not so runny, you can add a little bit of coconut oil. So start out with just like a half of a tablespoon. I don't really need it, but I'm gonna add it in anyway, just to show you guys, and melt that in with it. Now, if you add too much, you will get a little slight coconut flavor, um, but I didn't mind that. I used, I used it when I made um, peppermint patties, and I did not mind that slight coconut flavor when I made those. Um, but anyway, that's just an option, and it really does give you even more of a nice dipping chocolate, okay? So, half a tablespoon is definitely all I need. And the reason why it's important that you have your chocolate to the right consistency is because you want it to coat your candy, but then drip off the excess. And it just makes it a lot easier and faster when you go to dip the candy. So, all right, now I'm gonna go ahead, we're all done here, it looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the chocolate covered cherries out of the freezer and we're gonna get to dipping. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the chocolate, or the, the Ninja Foodie down to low now because it's already melted, all the chocolate's uh, you know, thin enough and we're ready to dip. So I just leave it on low, that's gonna keep it at a good temperature. Keep these in the freezer until just before you want to dip them. In fact, sometimes, like if you're taking a little bit longer to dip them, you may even need to put them back in the freezer because if the, I'm going to call it fondant, that's kind of what we've been calling it, if that gets too warm, it's going to drip and melt into your chocolate. So that's why you want them frozen. All right, so the first step in dipping the chocolate covered cherries is to create a chocolate bottom, okay? Now this is important because you need to build up the bottom so that you have a very good base so that your fondant, when it liquefies, doesn't drip out. So we start with that. So what I do is I just pick them up with my fingers and I just twirl the bottoms just like that, and then sit them right on my parchment. Now, if you've got a little pooling or anything, don't worry about that. We can clean that up later. It's not a big deal, although I usually don't even worry about it. 
If you have one with the stem on, you can use the stem as a little handle. And it's okay if you go halfway up, there's no problems with that. And then I just kind of get the excess off here. And put it on our parchment. I'm gonna do that for all of them. By the time I'm done, we should be able to go back to the first one and get it dipped. Again, if your fondant gets too, too soft, pop them in the refrigerator or the freezer again. That's not gonna hurt anything. And expect your hands to get messy. All right, so I just wiped that one off and I see a little bare spot, so that's not gonna work. We need to just dip it right back in again. We want a nice solid bottom on these. Now you don't have to use, uh, you don't have to use your fingers. You can use something else to dip them in, but I just find it easier to dip them right with my fingers, even though they get dirty. Not exactly dirty. I wouldn't call chocolate dirty, so they get messy. Hopefully I left enough room here. I think I can do it. Let's put that over there. They slide a little bit, so try to be careful there. All right, let's put that last one right there. All right, so it looks like the very first one that we did is pretty good. We can probably dip that one now. So I'm gonna grab a butter knife and a fork and we're gonna get to dipping them in the chocolate. All right, before we get to dipping, because I know there's gonna be somebody who's like, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna dip them. I'm not gonna put the bottom on. Well, this one was done without putting the bottom on first, okay? And so when you do it, like I'm gonna show you with a fork, which is a really easy way to do it, you end up getting some little scrapes on the bottom from when you push it off. And those areas, the your fondant, as it liquefies, is just gonna leak out. You're gonna end up with a big old mess. So take the time to dip the bottom, so it's very important. So I'm gonna re-dip this one, I'm not gonna waste it or anything, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, I'm not just telling you to do this because I wanna waste your time. That's not it for sure. All right, so let's go ahead and start getting the rest of these dipped. Okay, so I just set it right on the fork. I'm not gonna worry about this little extra right now, I can deal with that later. So I set it right on the fork, Put it into the chocolate. I try to keep it on the fork if I can, but if you can't, you can certainly um, let it fall in and then just grab it out real quick. So then once I coat it in the chocolate, I go up and down. All right, so I just keep going up and down until all of the excess drips off and then you can just pull your fork back over the edge to get anything else off. I usually pull one up as I put one on, because you need a little bit of room here to do this, and then just take your knife and just gently pull it off and let it sit on the parchment paper. All right, and we're gonna repeat that for all of them. So this one's gonna be a stem, and this is what I wanted to show you too, is that the stem, it's very important that you take the chocolate up a good quarter of an inch above that stem. You need a really good seal or you're gonna have your chocolate covered cherry stuff leak right out. So usually, I just cover the whole thing. And do the same thing, up and down.
until it's no longer dripping. And then you can either, you can grab it here, you'll get a little chocolate, but you can grab it here if you want and set it there. That's the only advantage, in my opinion, of using the stems, is it does give you a little handle. So it's a little bit easier to uh, dip and get on to the uh, tray. But I prefer to roll them without the stem, so I don't usually do that too much. All right, so let's go ahead and get this back on the fork. We'll do another one with the stem. back on there. All right, so I'm going to dip the rest of these, but I wanted to tell you that if you wanted to get like a little design on the top, you can do that by taking, like I'm using a little cake tester, but you could use like a small um, uh, uh, skewer or something like that. This is a little bit of a flat end, so I think it works pretty well. Just grab a little bit of chocolate on it. Take it on the top here and make a little circle. I kind of try to get it so it looks like a little, you know, a little decoration, okay? That is how they look when you get them out of the box, right? So you could certainly do that at home too. Or don't worry about it, either way is fine. All right, so I'm gonna grab another tray because you don't wanna be too crowded when you're pushing them off. They just, it just is harder to do. So even though they all fit on there, it just isn't as easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab another tray here and finish them up on this tray. And they are getting quite warm right now, but I'm still doing okay with dipping them. So I have not had to put them back in the refrigerator or the freezer. All right, so I've got one more to do, and I left this one for the last because, you know, this one's got a large area of chocolate on it, so I'm just gonna kind of cut some of that off, and I'm just gonna use this tool. You could use anything you want. Just cut it off from around here a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna make the design on the top of the rest of these and then we will pop them into the refrigerator for about five minutes or so. I just want them to set up. Then they can be stored room temperature in a covered container until the centers liquefy, which takes about two weeks. But I made some a few weeks ago, so I've got some to test for you today. All right, so I let these stay in the refrigerator for just about five minutes. And then what I like to do is leave them on the counter if your house isn't too hot, leave them on the counter for another hour or so before I put them into a container and store them. I also lay parchment down in the container. I would not recommend just throwing them into like a plastic bag because the, the outsides are gonna get kind of dinged up as they touch each other. All right, so now some of them are gonna have excess chocolate on the bottom. And what I do to get rid of that is just take a little knife and just sort of break it off, okay? And then there you go. So we've got that one. And now we're gonna test the one that I made. This is probably, I made this about two and a half, three weeks ago. And some of them, I've tested them like a week after and they had started to liquefy but weren't totally liquefied. And then I kept trying one, I know, like, my job is horrible, right? So I had to eat a chocolate covered cherry every single night and it was just awful, let me tell you. But 
I found that about two weeks was the magic time frame for the centers to get nice and liquidy. But some of them, I will tell you, some of them were more liquidy than others. So we don't know what we're gonna find when I cut into this one. I've got a few other ones here that I can also cut into just to show you. I have been thinking about increasing the Invertase. That's that, oh, I don't have it out anymore. But that's that uh, bottle that I use that helps to break down the sugar and turn it into liquid. I've been thinking about increasing that from a half of a teaspoon to three quarters or one teaspoon. I do not think it will affect the recipe if you want to take that up a little bit and maybe that will give you more liquidy center than even I was able to get. Um, but I tested the recipe twice and they were pretty liquidy. So I don't think it'll hurt the recipe at all if you decide to increase that Invertase to three quarters or one teaspoon. But I decided to leave well enough alone because I had made them uh, so many times already and I didn't want to prolong the recipe because I wanted you guys to have this in time to make them for Christmas if you wanted to. That's why we're putting the, it out early in December so that you can make, make them because they're delicious. All right, here goes. Oh my gosh, I hope it works. Uh, yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> that looks really, really good. So they are nice and liquidy and just creamy and drippy and all that good stuff that you want with a chocolate covered cherry. And they taste amazing, absolutely amazing. Heaven. Mm. Pure heaven. Mm, mm, mm. Delicious. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this one because I want you to see the difference. This is the one we just made. Okay, so you can see, it, you know, it's still solid in there. It's not liquidy. And that's all liquid. That's why I'm thinking, eh, you know, I think it would be okay to go up because then if you went up to uh, one teaspoon, you might get all of that instead of some of this that's still a little, little on the more solid side. Sorry I'm making a mess, but I like to explain everything to you guys. But either way, they're incredibly delicious. They are a lot of fun to make and they make beautiful gifts. Enjoy. <laughs> 